Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for 10 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 10th of February and we'll be able to set up beyond that with the Accenture Fest. It's some ensembles, maybe on trying to come weeks. Have a look at Surface V2 at the end of the video for February. And we'll also have a look at the strat, uh, the strat forecast from the GFS at the end of the video as well. So more about that later on. Uh, please like, share and subscribe on all today's videos and content. Thanks so much for doing that. First video today was JMA Friday. We haven't released a 6 m broadcast, but I will try and get that back uh, this weekend. No live stream time. I'm feeling a lot better here, but the voice is sounding a lot stronger. Um, but uh, still, I'm feeling a lot better, but still not very well, as you get what I mean. So uh, for tonight, I'm going to have an early night. And uh, a, a peaceful, quiet night here in the towers, uh, which my neighbour Claire next door will be very thankful for. Um, and uh, hopefully, we'll have the lives back on Sunday, if not Sunday, definitely uh, Wednesday. But I am uh, aiming to get the live stream uh, done on Sunday. If you could please like, share, subscribe, and share, share everyone for dear Matt, for Gav's weather vids. Right, okay, we're going to start off with the latest one from Matt from Earth No School dot net. So high pressure. <coughs> Having said, I'm feeling a lot better. I am still coughing. Um, high pressure is uh, dominating the weather through uh, Western and also uh, Northern Europe. Uh, low pressure is out in the Atlantic. We're gradually moving into a more high pressure uh, dominated pattern. Eventually, by the end of next year, high pressure looks like it's going to get Scandinavia and bring the wind around to the east. Central England temperature is now sitting at 3.4, that's still half a degree below the 61 to 90 average and it's provisional to yesterday to the 31st of January. That might tick up another point, one of a degree. <coughs> <coughs> So sorry, everyone, to get to 3.5 when it updates tomorrow. Won't get any higher than that. It is going to be a colder than average January, both by 61 to 90, particularly by 91 to 2020. I will talk much more about that tomorrow. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. A couple of weeks looking at Norwich today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Norwich. If we get the wind into the east, that will be the first place <laughs> that feels it later next week. So it's going off a bit below average with the upper air temperature today, but they will be lifting up over the uh, next uh, few days as high pressure strengthens across the country. Events, as high pressure goes to Scandinavia. Later next week, the upper air temperature is dropping. And we have got quite a coldish spell opening up there now from the first week into the second week of uh, February. Most of those on some members are beneath the long-term 30-year average, which, of course, is the thick red line. So, becoming colder <coughs> from the first week into the second week of February. Precipitation wise, got a lot of dry weather to come as well. Some showery bursts today, like rain and drizzle, and a little bit around the middle next week as a uh, cold from moves across the country and introduces this drop in the temperature. But overall, the next week or so, looking pretty dry. And even into the second week of February, quite a lot of dry weather on offer there. There isn't much of a way of uh, precipitation being indicated. Temperature anomalies in the uh, one to five day time frame, taking up to next Wednesday, around to a slightly uh, above average, not a particularly big deviation. But if you have a look at the six to ten day temperature on it, it's a very different story, looking uh, really quite cold there across at most parts of uh, not just the UK and Ireland, but Western uh, Europe. And that actually intensifies uh, as we go through to uh, the days 9 to 13 and uh, 10 to 14 time frame. Um, I wouldn't quite say uh, Western and Northern Europe is plunging to the freezer, but it certainly looks uh, really quite cold there through most parts of Europe, and particularly, I'd say, Western uh, Europe looking, uh, uh, you know, really quite cold. Um, so uh, we could well end up by the middle of February with uh, quite a significant cold of an average temperature anomaly again, similar to what happened in January, I guess. Precipitation anomalies uh, out to the next week, getting us to Friday, 7th of February. Uh, most parts of Europe looking drier than uh, normal. And in the, um, let's have a look at the 8 to 14 day time frame, uh, still on the drier side, not quite as dry, then gets to the middle of February, but, uh, you know, still uh, largely on the drier side. So it looks like it's going to be a very dry first start of February, but getting colder. 
Right, okay, let's start again with chart data there. Mr. Sal latest UK met Euro run is looking for midnight on uh, Monday. Low pressure out in the Atlantic, high pressure on the southwest. So, pretty mild for the early part of next week. There's a lot of dry weather in the south and the east, always more unsettled uh, in the north and west. So, mid of next week sees a change as the cold front comes southwards, introducing cooler air, and then high pressure strengthens to the second half, well, ha second half next week. And that'll be a colder high, a colder ridge, and it will start to uh, bring some significant a colder nights with it and by the end of next week which gets us to Friday 7th of February not where that high pressure going is going to uh, Scandinavia so the beginnings uh, of a Scandinavian high of the UK met uh, by the end of next week I can't all much of a muchness through uh, the early part of next week quite mild then high pressure builds in through the middle of next week that's a colder ridge and then the high pressure moving its way quickly up to Scandinavia at the end of next week and already by midday next week it's starting to bring the wind around to the east now this is not a big swimming east because there's not much cold air over on the continent bear in mind though the continent can cool down very very quickly so uh you know at this time of year so uh, a continental landmass can go from relatively mild to completely frozen <laughs> within a couple of days most dramatically so in Canada and North America. <coughs> But uh, we can see that uh, to, uh, you know, a slightly less dramatic uh, extent over in Europe as well. So uh, let's get high pressure in and then see where the pattern evolves to, I would say. Uh, well, this is how the uh, KMA is looking. Again, relatively uh, mild early next week and high pressure bringing uh, drier, colder weather with some frost. The wind in from the east, but the KMA today very quickly gets rid of that Scandinavian high and takes off into uh, another spell of westerly winds and, you know, uh, low pressure dominated weather. So the KMA big wobble on the Scandi slash Siberian high today. Let's have a look at the GFS. This is a big light run. So once again, we find high pressure building in for the moon next week and ridging up to Scandinavia. Uh, and remember, this is all uh, extending from the Siberian high. So that's the Siberian high just there, 1,055 millibars. It's sending the ridge down. Send it. Uh, send it. <laughs> Hello, say dear. I'm sure you're going to be watching and laughing. Uh, sending, send it, uh, send it, Siberian High. Send him a ridge down to <laughs> Scandinavia. I'm being quite a bit better. Get hints of, uh, of giddiness beginning to creep back into the. <laughs> <laughs> into the bids. Um, oh, so sorry, everyone. Uh, and send it. Um, the high pressure from Siberia going down into Scandinavia, uh, bringing the wind around to a little bit more of an easterly there uh, by the end of next week. That's not a cold easterly, though, has to be said. However, we do have a blocking area of high pressure to our north and east, and that's maintained up to date. Um, so up to that point, it could have been uh, quite cold. Cold. It could be overnight frost, probably fog, and we might start bringing lots of uh, gloom and murk and dampness from off the North Sea as well. Uh, beyond that, low pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic of a big night run. This is the GFS 6 said, uh, looking like that. So, uh, again, we've got um, red 30 miles start next week. Then high pressure builds in, moves to Scandinavia, which reaches back to Siberia. We turn the wind into a not particularly cold easterly, but east winds are maintained there via the Scandinavian high up to uh, day 10. And then in the more <laughs> extended range, <coughs> Sorry, sorry, everyone. Many more extended range. Another area of high pressure starts to build to the north of Scotland. And that one also going to Scandinavia. And that starts to bring in some colder air from the east. So uh, by the time you get to 13th February, long way out now, of course, they're actually bringing in the minus 10 Celsius ice firm across England and Wales. That'd be cold enough to bring snow showers into South East. That's not a beach from the east, but it certainly would be very cold with daytime temperatures not getting much above freezing and some hard overnight frost. So that's what I was talking about a moment ago. Let's Let's get high pressure in and then see whether it evolves into, uh, you know, a cold, uh, genuinely cold pattern. It's not going to be particularly cold to start off with at the end of next week. Only sort of standard frost and fog 
tote card. But I always say, let's get the block in place and then we see where we go from there. And actually, this GFS um, tries to get high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland. We've got some very cold air pulling in uh, around the back of it by the 16th of February. So gradually, incrementally, GFS 6 everyone could be evolving on a day-by-day -day basis into potentially quite a, well, quite a cold pattern. I won't say severely cold because <laughs> you got to be uh, uh, careful. I have to be careful, you know, about the phraseology. But you get what I mean. Uh, right, okay. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's say what I think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weather Vids. <coughs> And get them to subscribe to show to everyone uh, for doing that. We've put on around 45 subscribers now. Get ourselves to 19.5k. Uh, so you could give us a sub and tell your friends and fam family to subscribe. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, GM, all much of a muchness through the early part of next week. And high pressure builds strongly through the middle of next week. That high will be within clear or colder air. We could bring some overnight frost. And then end of next week, take high pressure up to Scandinavia. We switch the wind around to the east. And uh, we've got the high pressure then dominating from Scandinavia to Western Russia up to day 10. And bring in what will probably be an increasingly cold easting. So by day 10, I would be at all surprised if there'd been some snow showers started to arrive on those southern and eastern coastal fringes. Upper air temperatures look like that. We have got a puddle of uh, minus uh, 10 cell dice sperm sitting over southern Germany. So I reckon that easting will be uh, feeling increasingly cold by days 8, 9, and 10 there with the gem. Again, it's not a beach from the east, though. At least, not, at least initially, it won't be. And then the ECM at WF rounds it all off. So, again, relatively mild to start next week. Driving south and set to the door. High pressure takes over, bringing frost and fog through the middle part of next week. High pressure then up to Scandinavia um, at the end of next week and into next weekend. Quite cold, potentially, next week. And then get this funny little area of low pressure developing um, over into the south of the country. Not sure about that. I think the ECM will probably be a synoptic outlier with uh, that to low. However, it is within quite cold air and we have got uh, um, an area of minus 10 celsius at 858 pa air sitting over the other side of the north sea so it's the kind of thing that might deliver a snow event unexpectedly uh, around days 8 and 10 but as i said i'm not sure really uh, about that uh, and then we eventually end up with the ecm going into a battleground scenario low pressure against this blocking area of high pressure so all sorts of fun and games could be possible with that this is a precipitation forecast based on that ecm run from tibetia.com the emphasis is on dry weather over the next few days away from scotland and island anyway around the middle of next week a band of showy rain pushing through the country and introduces some colder air with frost and fog second half of next week and then we get that funny little area of low pressure developing uh that's bringing like rain and snow though to england and wales again really quite unsure uh, about that these are the options on the table within the ecm ensembles today for day 10 from the icelandic met office <coughs> Gets us to the 10th of February. 23 members of the ECL Somers have that Scandinavian high and a lower pressure to the south. Uh, we've got 16, again, with high pressure to the north of Scotland back to Scandinavia. That's more of a straightforward easterly and would be cold there from the east. Then 12 with high pressure over the country and low pressure out to the northwest. That's introducing a bit more Atlantic flow. So that's the mildest option out of the two but if we put the 23 uh together with 16 that's a strong majority in favor of scandinavian high though so probably quite cold around day 10 if nothing else i mean in two weeks time these are the options that we've got and it gets to the 15th of february 25 members of the ecm on so maintaining that scandinavian high and continuing to bring in potentially cold easterly uh, 15, much more unsettled, low pressure in from off the Atlantic, so that's a lot more unsettled. That includes with chart and the operational one. And then we've got 11 just here with high pressure, generally over to south country, low pressure up there. That's a bit milder with winds in from the west. So a lot to play for, a lot of options on the table there, uh, at both day 10 and also... <coughs> 
uh, day 14 as well. Uh, CFS V2, uh, finally, this is the latest 700, and it will be the final 700 mil of our high dominant for uh, January. Remember, these have been changing daily and very gradually. This has been evolving into a more blocked pattern with above average heights now signal um, to be dominating across uh, most parts of Eurasia, uh, actually. But a lot further north than the CFS monthly, as we're indicating like a week or so ago. Um, temperature knowledge, therefore, are cooler than was indicated a few uh, days ago on these charts, about average, really. And precipitation-wise, we see a wetter than average signal away to our north and the west, with a drier than average signal to our east. CFS moved a lot in the blocked direction. And, uh, you know, we got a colder February than we was anticipating a while ago. Well, I said we finish off having a look at the strategy here. So, latest uh, temperature forecast for 10 HPA in the strategy here over the Arctic of the North Pole. The latest GFS run looks like this. The blue and purple colours may up cold temperatures in the strategy here. That is the stratospheric polar vortex, essentially. So, uh, we run through and we find that a warming starts to gather pace over Siberia there. Uh, as we go from the first week into the second week of February. And then that uh, warming producing a displacement event of stratospheric polar vortex pushed down, squashed down into North America, North Atlantic and Northern Europe. And then again, I think we have a bit of a split of the stratospheric polar vortex on our hands there in a very extended range with this GFS run. That's how we end up by the 16th of February. One lobe of blue dropping down to America, Another lobe of blue dropping down into Europe and uh, Western Russia. Oh, a very significant uh, stratospheric warming probably would be enough to reverse the zone of wind at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north, and would therefore be a technical SSW. Um, and it looks like it's splitting the, po the polar vortex as well there on that uh, GFS run. And signs of intensification of the warming around Greenland, interestingly, by the 16th of February, because that's a very, very, very long way out. So we shall see. It's also I've got quite interesting stratosphere. Uh, why is possibly an SSW uh, some point during February? I think we're going to have a lot to keep an eye on during uh, this February. So, uh, you know, the blocking around uh, Scandinavia from the Siberian high, triggering an SSW, although that uh, easterly wind setting in this time next week doesn't look especially cold initially, um, particularly if uh, this is all reinforced by a sudden stratospheric warming event, we might find a way to some, you know, really quite cold weather for February is done. So uh, let's wait and see where it's all going. Uh, okay, we don't need to enjoy the video. Please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals and Weather Vids and get them to subscribe to. And we thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. So, tomorrow, we're gonna, going to. I'm going to try and do a 6 a.m. forecast. Most of the thing is, most of is, I'm feeling very, very sleepy. Have been this week, uh, so that's the reason I'm not being recorded. I'm just no problem to record it, it's only a two or three minute video, really. So, uh, it's, it's a very quick, easy video to, to do. Six hour forecast, but most evenings this week, I've just been sleeping after a bad beginner and you know, <laughs> and just 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 uh, sleeping. So, I'm going to try and get a six hour forecast done anyway. Uh, this evening for tomorrow, um, not sure about weekend and we each have WF 42 day, but we will definitely have a 10 to 14 day tomorrow. I'm very glad to show you next year days all of the content that you enjoy uh, will start to uh, come back as i get a bit better day by day right okay well we'll, e we'll end it there you enjoy the rest of your friday afternoon evening i'll say no pub run uh, this evening but uh, you enjoy the rest of your friday afternoon evening and uh, we shall see you with more uh, very soon for this one that's all for now and thanks for watching